Here again is brought to view the personality of the Father and the Son, showing the unity that exists between them. This unity is expressed also in the 17th chapter of John in the prayer of Christ for his disciples. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, as thou hast loved me. John 17, verses 20 to 23. Wonderful statement! The unity that exists between Christ and his disciples does not destroy the personality of either. They are one in purpose, in mind, in character, but not in person. It is thus that God and Christ are one. The relation between the Father and the Son and the personality of both are made plain in this scripture also. Thus speaketh Jehovah of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of Jehovah, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne. And he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. Zechariah 6, 12 and 13 from the American Revised Version. Chapter 15, The Everlasting God In the Word, God is spoken of as the Everlasting God. This name embraces past, present, and future. God is from everlasting to everlasting. He is the Eternal One. The Eternal God is thy dwelling place, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he thrust out the enemy from before thee, and said, Destroy! And Israel dwelleth in safety, the fountain of Jacob alone, in a land of corn and wine. Yea, his heavens drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, a people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and that is the sword of thy excellency. See Deuteronomy 33, verses 27 to 29, Revised Version. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to dust, and sayest, Return, ye children of men, for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood, they are as a sheep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. This was taken from Psalms 90, verses 2 to 6, from the American Revised Version, C. Margin. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. O oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. Psalms 90, verses 12 and 14 to 17. The Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old, thou art from everlasting. See Psalms 93, verses 1 and 2. Chapter 16 His Loving Kindness all his work is done in faithfulness. He loveth righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of Jehovah. 
Blessed is the nation whose God is Jehovah, the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Behold, the eye of Jehovah is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his loving kindness, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul hath waited for Jehovah. He is our help and our shield, for our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. See Psalms 33, verses 4, 5, 12, and 18 through 21, taken from the American Revised Version. I sought Jehovah, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were radiant, and their faces shall never be confounded. This poor man cried, and Jehovah heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of Jehovah encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that Jehovah is good! Blessed is the man that taketh refuge in him. O oh, fear Jehovah, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek Jehovah shall not want any good thing. The righteous cried, and Jehovah heard, and delivered them out of all their troubles. Jehovah is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as are of a contrite spirit. See Psalms 34, verses 4 to 10, verses 17 and 18, from the American Revised Version. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Verse 22. Jehovah is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abundant in loving kindness. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us after our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so Jehovah pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourisheth, for the wind passeth over it, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. But the loving kindness of Jehovah is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his precepts to do them. See Psalms 103, verses 8 to 18 taken from the American Revised Version. Chapter 17 His Providential Care Our God has heaven and earth at His command, and He knows just what we need. We can see only a little way before us, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of Him with whom we have to do. See Hebrews 4.13 Above the distractions of the earth, he sits enthroned. All things are open to his divine survey, and from his great and calm eternity he orders that which his providence sees best. Not even a sparrow falls to the ground without the Father's notice. Satan's hatred against God leads him to delight in destroying even the dumb creatures. It is only through God's protecting care that the birds are preserved to gladden us with their songs of joy. But he does not forget even the sparrows. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. See Matthew 10.31 Bless Jehovah, O my soul. O Jehovah, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty who coverest thyself with light as with a garment, who stretchest out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh winds his messengers, flames of fire his ministers, who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be moved for ever. Thou coveredest it with a deep as with a vesture, the waters stood above the mountains, 
At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. The mountains rose, the valleys sank down unto the place where thou hadst founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they may not turn again to cover the earth. He sendeth forth springs into the valleys. They run amongst the mountains. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them the birds of the heavens have their habitation. They sing among the branches. He watereth the mountains from his chambers. The earth is filled with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle, and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth, and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread that strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of Jehovah are filled with moisture. The cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted, where the birds make their nests, as for the stork, the fir trees are her house. The high mountains are for the wild goats. The rocks are a refuge for the conies. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth his going down. Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey, and seek their food from God. The sun ariseth, and they get them away, and lay them down in their dens. Man goeth forth unto his work, and to his labor until the evening. O Jehovah, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. There go the ships. There is Leviathan, whom thou hast formed to play therein. These wait all for thee, that thou mayest give them their food in due season. Thou givest unto them, they gather. Thou openest thy hand, they are satisfied with good. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die, and return to their dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the ground. Let the glory of Jehovah endure forever. Let Jehovah rejoice in his works. Who looketh on the earth, and it trembleth? He toucheth the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing unto Jehovah as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have any being. Let my meditation be sweet unto him. I will rejoice in Jehovah. Psalms 104, verses 1 to 34, from the American Revised Version. Thou that art the confidence of all the ends of the earth, and of them that are afar off upon the sea, who by his strength setteth fast the mountains, being girded about with might, who stilleth the roaring of the seas and the tumult of the peoples, thou makest the outgoings of the morning and evening to rejoice. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy paths drop fatness. Psalm 65, verses 5 to 11, from the ARV. Jehovah upholdeth all that fall, and riseth up all those that are bowed down. The eyes of all wait for thee, and thou givest them their food in due season. Thou openest thy hand, and satisfiest the desire of every living thing. From Psalms 145, verses 14 to 16, from the ARV. Chapter 18 His Long Suffering Mercy. No earthly parent ever pleaded so earnestly with an erring child as he who made us pleads with the transgressor. No human loving interest ever followed the impenitent with invitations so tender. Thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. But thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Isaiah 43:22. O my people, what have I done unto thee? And wherein have I wearied thee? Micah 6, 3. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Hosea 11, 1. 
Jehovah's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land, and in the waste howling wilderness. He compassed him about, he cared for him. He kept him as the apple of his eye, as an eagle that stirreth up her nest, that fluttereth over her young. He spread abroad his wings, he took them, he bare them on his pinions. Deuteronomy 32, verses 9 to 11, ARV. They kept not the covenant of God, and refused to walk in his law. Psalm 78, 10. The more the prophets called them, the more they went from them. Yet I taught Ephraim to walk. I took them on my arms, but they knew not that I healed them. I drew them with cords of a man, with bands of love. My people are bent on backsliding from me. Though they call them to him that is on high, none at all will exalt him. Hosea 11, verses 2 to 7, ARV. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity, and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away, and did not stir up all his wrath, for he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away, and cometh not again. Psalm 78, verses 38 and 39. Though he delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand, yet he said, My loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. Psalm 78, verses 61, and Psalms 89, verse 33. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? Taken from the authorized version. For as often as I speak against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore my heart yearneth for him. Jeremiah 31.20, ARV How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I cast thee off, Israel? How shall I make thee as Adma? How shall I set thee as Zeboam? My heart is turned within me. My compassions are kindled together. I will not execute the fierceness of mine anger. I will not return to destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not man, the Holy One in the midst of thee, and I will not come in wrath. Hosea 11, 8 and 9, ARV. O Israel, return unto Jehovah thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity, Take with you words, and return unto Jehovah. Say unto him, Take away all iniquity, and accept that which is good. A Caesarea shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hands. Ye are our gods. For in thee the fatherless find mercy. Hosea 14, verses 1 to 3, ARV. They shall walk after Jehovah. The children shall come trembling from the west. They shall come trembling as a bird out of Egypt and as a dove out of the land of Assyria. For I will make them to dwell in their houses, saith Jehovah. Hosea 11, verses 10 and 11, ARV. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from him. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall blossom as the lily, and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread, and his beauty shall be as the olive tree, and his smell as Lebanon. They that dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall revive as the grain, and blossom as the vine. Ephraim shall say, What have I to do any more with idols? I have answered, and will regard him. I am like a green fir tree, from me is thy fruit found." Who is wise, that he may understand these things? Prudent, that he may know them. For the ways of Jehovah are right, and the just shall walk in them. Hosea 14, verses 4 to 9, ARV. Who is a God like unto thee, that pardoneth iniquity, and passeth over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger for ever, because he delighteth in loving kindness. He will again have compassion upon us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot, 
and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Micah 7, 18 and 19, ARV. Jehovah appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness I have drawn thee. The Lord hath redeemed Jacob, and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. I will turn their mourning into joy, and will comfort them, and make them rejoice from their sorrow. My people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith Jehovah. See Jeremiah 31, verse 3, ARV, 11 and 13, AV, and 14, ARV. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all thy heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Jehovah hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy. The King of Israel, even Jehovah, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not fear evil any more. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, O Zion, let not thy hands be slack. Jehovah thy God is in the midst of thee, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Zephaniah 3, verses 14 to 17, ARV. This God is our God for ever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. Psalms 48, 14.